It's 5.45 hey. p.m., which means it's time for BCTV's <laughs> nightly news roundup. I'm Roland Boyd, and that's Joe Bushy. The show's 5.45 live, and we've got some uh, good stuff on deck tonight. Uh, we'll talk about the skate park uh, upcoming meeting. Of course, uh, we're looking at uh, some... Uh, we'll go back to that flotilla footage, all that and more. Uh, remember, we do it all in 15 minutes or possibly less. So make sure uh, you stick with us right here on 545 Live. Vermont Yankee has had opposition ever since it opened its doors in 1972. Shut it down. But it wasn't until late into its original 40-year license that protests took the center stage. Welcome back to this September 21st, 2012 edition of 545 Live. I'm Roland Boyden. That's Joe Bushy. The show's 545 Live, as we mentioned. That's a, a little sample of our latest uh, VY, uh, VTVVY saga. Uh, the backdrop, the flotilla protest uh, that happened this past Saturday, but we've been accumulating footage from protests dating all the way back to the early 2000s, interviews from the last couple of years with politicians, uh, representatives and the like. We've put it together into a, a two-minute powerhouse for you. It's available on BCTV's Facebook, Brattlebro TV, Facebook.com slash Brattlebro TV, and of course it goes up on our YouTube channels and always at BrattlebroTV.org where we have a slick new HD video on demand. That's enough for uh, us. Shameless self-promotion here for HD the uh, the time being. Joe, uh, we round up uh, some of the stories going on around the community, including some that the uh, reformer has going for them. That's uh, where you come in here. Reformer and the commons is where we it's harvest true. them, is it not? Let's take a look at uh, today's <clears throat> here we go. stories here. Oh, well, there we go. Well, today we'll start with the death Wednesday of 39-year-old Putney resident Douglas Plitt, who suffered a fatal head injury after leaping in front of an oncoming truck traveling south on Route 5. The three occupants of the truck sustained no injuries, and the initial police investigation indicates the driver was not at fault. Next, the Guilford man charged with felonious aggravated assault with a weapon and misdemeanor domestic assault last year for stabbing a local man in the stomach has been sentenced to a 24 to 32 month suspended sentence. There you go. Uh, just a, a sample. You can flesh out those stories for yourself at reformer.com. All right, Joe, moving on. We've got plenty of stuff coming up. Uh, go Skateboarding Day is uh, the flashback I want to take as we go back into the archives. But first, there's an upcoming meeting, which is uh, really the catalyst for us going back uh, into our rewinded time here to take a look at Go Skateboarding Day. Briefly uh, sum up this upcoming meeting, goals, hopes, dreams. The, for ba it. the basic skate park group, Red Bull Area Skate Park, is coming has a contracted with a designer, ASD Stantec, out of Boston and Burlington, and they are holding their first public design input forum on the 27th, next week, the 27th, 6 o'clock, at the Gibson Aiken Center. And this is a meeting for all those that are interested in coming to uh, give their input as to the design of the park. Uh, we, we definitely... You know, we understand there's a lot of opposition to that park, and there is a place and time for that conversation to be had as well. But uh, we're we're not planning for that in general to be take place at the design input meeting. This is to work with a designer to try and work on our ultimate goal of the skate park. So um, we look forward to seeing you there. If you're in support, if you had constructive ideas about uh, you know how things should be done there, by all means, butters, neighbors, anyone, you're you're surely welcome. Bring your uh, Bring your thoughts and ideas, and we look forward to seeing you. All right, we've, uh, we've got a clip from Go Skateboarding Day. Here's select board member Ken Schneck talking about the skate park. I'm a big proponent of youth and activities for youth, and I think this is the place to put a skateboard park. We need a skateboard park. These are folks, I mean, look at this, and it's still early. There are folks who need a place to go, and if there's something that I can do for the town to support a place for youth to go to actually exert energy, 100% for it. Ken, select board member Ken Schneck uh, talking uh, about uh, the potential for a skate park. All right, moving on, uh, Joe. I'll I'll do this story here. As we uh, there we go. You were out at the drop-in center today, where they kicked off their big-time remodeling project, backed financially by Entergy, Vermont Yankee, GPI, CNS, and others. WTSA's Tim Johnson was there for some interviews live on the radio, and we were able to listen in. 
like many nonprofits, uh, they don't have the resources to really, um, you know, do the things that they really like to do. And, and oftentimes, you know, they're fulfilling, uh, you know, their mission, but they're really not able to have uh, their facilities be up to where they'd like to have them be. And, uh, you know, we just see this as, as being huge and, and being able to help the drop-in center. Good work, Joe. Good work, Tim Johnson, uh, getting a little footage there of the Brattleboro Area Drop-in Center. All right, uh, more stories uh, coming up here in uh, just a moment. If you want to roll this here script here, let's take a look. Vermont State Police Report, VSP Report, uh, the latest addition to our uh, our show here, getting all the latest updates from our VSP contact, uh, Stephanie Desario. There's the uh, latest news coming out of the Vermont uh, State Police barracks. Uh, I'll have you read this one, Joe. Let's... Uh, Go back into... All right. <clears throat> Let's see what we have here. Well, Vermont State Police have moved on a U.S. Attorney's Office investigation by arresting two Vermont residents in St. Johnsbury on conspiracy to manufacture methamphetamine. In a press release entitled Public Safety Concerns Surrounding Meth Lab Sites, Lieutenant Matt Birmingham of the Vermont State Police Drug Task Force wrote, quote, the sites associated with the manufacturing of methamphetamines were located and mitigated yesterday by members of the state hazmat response team and the Vermont State Police's clandestine laboratory team. At no time was there an immediate threat to public safety, end quote. I love the uh, clandestine laboratory team from the state of Vermont. All right. Fortunately, unbeknownst to you and I, uh, what I'm reading is that, that those, uh, those drugs, heroin and methamphetamine, are really becoming a big problem everywhere throughout the country, even in backwoods country little places like Vermont. So uh, Vermont, second in the nation uh, uh, in uh, substance abuse and first in the nation in prescription uh, drug abuse. All right. Moving on, uh, Brattleboro Select Board meeting. You know, if there's all that drug abuse, Joe, we're going to need a, uh, a police force there. They want a new station uh, to help their operations. The town wants it too. Uh, but it's going to go to the town meeting reps now uh, for That's a right. proposed tax increase. This one's yours again. Let's out go of the, out of the board's back hands. Back to the close up. Well, here. the proposed tax increase to pay for the town's new fire and police station is out of the select board's hands as it will go to the town meeting reps who will vote on it. In or out as a uh, at a special representative town meeting on October twentieth at eight thirty p.m. A.M. Oh wait, A.M. eight thirty a.m. Wait for a.m. at Academy School. There's two more meetings on the books though, designed to gather public input before the vote. Those will be both at the Gibson Aiken Center at six thirty p.m. on October third, and also at six thirty p.m. on October seventeenth. Follow along with the gritty details at bradbrow.org. There you go. Uh, the select board had uh, a clip at their last regularly scheduled meeting, so for some video to complement those dry facts at Tuesday's regularly scheduled Brett Select Board meeting, uh, member Dora Bubulis voiced her concerns uh, that sending it to the town reps wasn't going far enough. The 1% sales tax is a huge change for the community. A 5 or a 10% increase in property taxes is a huge change for the community. I really feel strongly that this should go out to a town-wide vote. If we're going to do something that's this big a change, the whole citizenry should be able to be participate in that decision. Next, the state auditor candidate Doug Hoffer, a Democrat, was in our downtown studios this week to talk with Montpelier Connection host and District 4 rep Mike Mowicki. The buzzword, performance auditing, something Hoffer said backs the need he sees to focus on the outcomes of new legislation and the money behind it public sector auditors should do more than just crunch the numbers and to track the money. Taxpayers uh, have a right to know and need to know whether in fact the programs created by the legislature are achieving the goals intended mm -hmm. by the legislature. Doug Hoffer when he was in our uh, downtown studios uh, on Wednesday talking with Mike Merwicki that full program will show next week on BCTV Channel 10 find the schedule for where you can see it on Comcast cable at BrattleboroTV.org where subsequently you can watch it in HD on our video on demand all right Joe moving on uh, our seven towns summary is next now uh, the B in BCTV of course stands for Brattleboro but there's seven other towns in the uh, region that BCTV serves has on their roster including uh, Guilford Vernon Demerston, uh, Putney, Jamaica, Townsend, Newfane, um, and we've got our, seven? I sure hope so, I can never <laughs> count. Um, 
Now, uh, we've got uh, the select board meetings from every one of those towns showing on BCTV Channel 10 uh, every week these days. And, of course, they're online as well on that BrattleboroTV.org site we just mentioned. But uh, on 545 Live, we're looking to just sample a clip of a few of those most recent select board meetings. Uh, that means we go back into the newsroom here, Joe, on your close-ups, and you right get on. to start us off. Well, we'll start off the seven-town summary in Dummerston, where a long-running feud between the board and Vermont Emergency Management over the handling of Dummerston during a Vermont Yankee disaster evacuation was left resolved, or rather, was resolved at least for now. We started with, you know, that was embarrassing for everybody on Monday. Let's, you know, let's move beyond. What they need to do is to let towns like Dummerston and everyone else in the EPZ know, know better what the big, where we fit into the big picture. And on to Putney, where town manager Cynthia Stoddard got the vote from the board to double down as the town's zoning administrator. Apparently, you have to officially appoint a zoning administrator. So moved. The Planning Commission nominated me at their last board meeting. I asked them if they wanted me to leave the room while they discussed who they wanted to well, that's appoint. That's right. I think but... we should have some men in this country. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Next, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services estimates that over $90 billion a year is lost to Medicare and Medicaid fraud and error and abuse. That's why Local Troop has taken to using theater as a way to educate seniors about staying safe in an era when seniors are rapidly becoming the most targeted demographic for scammers across the nation. It's right here on the statement. Bilateral breast enhancements. That was over $30,000 by itself. You haven't given your Medicare number out to anyone, have you? You know, that that's a common cause of Medicare fraud. Of course not. Except a month or so ago, they, they called to tell me that my Medicare card had expired and they needed my Medicare number to send me a new one. Your card had expired? Medicare cards don't expire. That next show is on BCTV um, at 11.30 a.m. tomorrow morning. All right. Uh, a few things before we wrap, uh, including, let's uh, keep rolling that script here. We've got uh, some stuff coming from the Brattleboro Museum and Arts Center. There we go. Why don't you start with uh, the Williamstown Mass, Joe? Well, all right then. The Williamstown Mass based landscape painter Stephen Hennick is now showing his work at the Brattleboro Museum and Arts Center with an exhibit entitled Gathering Light, which runs through October 21st of this year. Regarded by many in the field as one of the most influential landscape artists of the era, Hennock's work has slowly garnered notoriety across the globe. His technique involves a series of layers and layers and layers and layers of paint, but in between he's polishing them with enormous industrial grinders. By doing this type of work, he creates a surface that has echoes of its entire past in it. In addition to traditional painting, Hannock's work process includes sanding down his canvases between layers with an industrial belt sander. A few things before we wrap, Joe, as time cow. ticks down. Uh, BUHS TV <laughs> is back. That's uh, Brattleboro Union High School's morning news advisory program. We uh, take a clip of their weather every day uh, to get you updated on the weekend's forecast. Let's take a look. Today is mostly cloudy and it's a high of 74 and a low of 49. On Saturday is a high of 78 and a low of 55. And on Sunday is a low 67, I mean a high of 67 and a low of 41. Looks like we're gonna have a storm on Saturday. You better get your rain gear out. Now, back to the desk. Hey, and speaking of BUHS, right now we're having a tailgate party with WTSAFM up there in the parking lot of the high school. Another home football game with Brattleboro Colonels. I don't know exactly who they're playing. Shame on me. Somebody can let me know or keep us <laughs> in that loop. But uh, power to them, and uh, we may stop up there and take a little footage from that tonight, and we'll show you that on Tuesday, too. Boy, 10 seconds left. Thanks to everybody that makes BCTV tick the way it does. I'm Roland Boyd, and that's Joe Bushy. Night, everybody. The other question I had was, do we have to have someone that specializes in wastewater treatment or can it just be a general contractor? As far as I know, it's some site work, the... Yeah, because if it's like a $50,000 building, I can probably do it. Well, Chris said he could do it for 100. Exactly. <laughs> All right, well, I'll do it for 98. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's just start. 
this is all in good humor. <laughs>